for joining me for That's the way it is. I'm your host, BC. I was at Walmart earlier, and uh, you know, and I like listening to what people are doing. Not that I'm eavesdropping. Well, I guess you can't say it's eavesdropping. But uh, a lot of people, they're so loud, you can't help it, man. This one particular family was like that. Now, they have, it looked like, three boys. There was two in a car, and the lady was carrying one, and the husband was pushing the car. Now, she's in there, and the little boy's over there. This other little boy, he's got the little boy finger, and he's bending it. And the little boy, well, you know, his fingers, and the little boy's like over there, ow, 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 ow. So, and he's doing it for, you know, just a little bit there, because the little boy kept doing it. So, this lady's like, all right, you need to stop it. You need to quit saying that. I'm like, okay, the little boy, the little boy's like, well, he's hurting me. She's like, you're the one who is saying that. Now, this right here is a perfect example of not paying attention to what's going on. And, you know, even though she turned around and seen what was going on, she's going to blame this other little boy, you know, because he's the one that is, I guess, getting on her nerves. You know, it didn't bother her that it wasn't in her hand that the little boy was bending. But the little boy over there saying, ow, you know, that bothered her. Okay. What part of this, am I the only one who sees something really not right with this? And, you know, the, little, and the ladies over there talking about, uh, you know, telling the cashier as I'm walking off, y'all got the baby food back there? People actually steal baby food? I'm like, what? And the lady says, uh, yes. So when I hear this, I'm like, let me hold off just a second. Let me, uh, you know, make sure everything's in my bag. So, the lady's talking about, well, I'm from Italy, and, uh, you know, I haven't been in a Walmart in quite a few years. Okay, not only have you not been in a Walmart in quite a few years, ma'am, but, uh, evidently you missed some, you missed some videos that I've given, or you missed some, uh, job development videos, because, I'm gonna tell you what, you know, you're over there, you're getting on your kid, because he's saying, ow, oh, you need to get some root prop to get onto your kid, who's been in, been in another kid's hand. You know, causing it to hurt, or the little boy is saying that. The little boy is not saying how because he uh, was feeling good. You know, he's not James Brown or something. You know, he said how because he was in pain. And then, you know, and top it all off, she tells the little boy, says, uh, let's go to the bathroom. All right, everybody knows what that means. The little boy looks at her and says, why? And the woman says, we need to go to the bathroom. The little boy said, I ain't got to go to the bathroom. She said, well, mommy got to go to the bathroom. He said, well, you can go to the bathroom. Y'all stay here with daddy in the car. You know, it, it's funny. It's funny to listen to people and how they talk. You know, and how, how they uh, talk to their kids. You know, this little boy had done nothing wrong. He was bothering nobody. Evidently, he was bothering nobody but his mom. And she's going to get on him for something that uh, he really had no control of. You know, I actually seen the little boy reach over there and grab his brother's hand and bend him. You know, so I, I think it's crazy. And, you know, I think, in a way, I'm pretty sure that that is a type of abuse. You know, if not child abuse, some type of abuse. Uh, neglect, I mean, something. You know, but yet she uh, going and went on like everything is fine. And, you know, Dad, he's scared to say anything. I mean, you can look at him and say, oh, I ain't saying nothing. You know, because I look right at him, he looks down. You know? He, uh, so that right there tells you that uh, he's too scared to even speak up. And you know, that's a lot of people today. Not only are you scared to speak up to your spouse, but you're scared to speak up to what's going on in this country. He's scared of the repercussions. But you know what? Sometimes you got to weigh things. And, you know, just like Jesus, you know, when Jesus went, was going to the cross, and, you know, they beat him and put a crown of thorns on him, and uh, they hung him up there by putting nails in his hand and feet. That was not a good day. You can't tell me that, I mean, it was a good day, but it wasn't a good day as far as, you know, his body. You know, he, uh, he was in pain. But yet, he done that for the greater good. He done that for the forgiveness of our sins. Excuse me. You know, so sometimes we need to look and follow an example. And you know, I don't know of any better examples to follow than him. And, and, and you know, he had no problem speaking up against the government. You know, I mean, you remember, or the temple. You remember when he went to the temple and turned all the tables over? You know, because he was angry. But see, the thing of it is, he 
with anger like we get. He had what's called a righteous anger. You know, what these people were doing, they were using God, and I mean, they were really using them in order to get rich, using them for profit. That's not what God is there for. You know, a lot of people want to misinterpret that and say, well, you know, Jesus got angry. Yeah, Jesus did get angry, but he got, he had a righteous anger. And which means that he went against, not not necessarily uh, angry like, you know, like physical fight, but he made it a point that, you know, you don't take the church and turn it into a marketplace. And, you know, a lot of churches are doing that nowadays. They're taking their churches and making it into a income and some people even trying to make it into like a family business. That's not what church is there for. Church is there for you to go and um, it's not like a group organization you go to. Uh, it is a place to go and worship. And, and be honest with you, church, you don't have to worship in church. There's no word that says that, you know, church, you have to go to church in order to worship God. You know, when Jesus' and disciples are here, there, there was, the church was wherever you were standing at, whether it be in the woods, whether it was in the marketplace, uh, in someone's home, um, out in the field, by the sea. I mean, that's where your church was. It wasn't a building. The church was the body of people. So, uh, I'd like for you to subscribe to the channel, like the channel, uh, share the videos, and comment. Uh, let me know what you think. You have a wonderful day, and thanks for joining me.